Good morning. I hope this live is coming through. I just wanted to do a quick devotion about our fasting and our posture before God during our seven weeks of Monday's fasting. Uh, we're going to be looking at the book of Joel, which is one of our scripture focuses for this week. And it's chapter one, verse 14. And it reads, um, announce a time of fasting, call the people together for a solemn meeting, bring the leaders and all the people of the land into the temple of the Lord your God and cry out to him there. And the other scripture is, yes, is chapter two, verse 12. It says, that is why the Lord says, turn to me now while there is time. Give me your hearts. Come with fasting, weeping, and mourning. Come with fasting, weeping, and mourning. When we see here in the book of Joel, how God commanded um, that there was to be a time of fasting announced to the people. Um, it was a fast, like a period of time when no food was eaten and people approached God with humility, sorrow for sin and urgent prayer. So that is the posture um, how we should be approaching our time of fasting with humility, sorrow for sin, and urgent prayer. Humility, um, not thinking of ourselves more highly than we ought. Sometimes we get sidetracked and even too excited when uh, or zealous when we start doing work for the Lord and there can uh, be a line it's a fine line that's easily crossed with us because our flesh tends to take over and we don't approach God or the work of God with humility um, humility, the, the root of humility is, is really uh, seeing our, our humanness, um, seeing how low we are uh, compared to God. Uh, and I know that's a, a challenging position in these days and times when we talk so much about self-esteem, self-confidence, being all that. We work to improve ourselves. We go to school, we're highly educated. Um, we have great jobs, great positions and companies and, and in the world. But when we come before God, we are to come before God and the work of God, which should overflow throughout every area of our lives. We should come with a position of humility humility i was watching uh like a little documentary there was a preacher who went on a tour of the holy land and uh it was a church where they believed uh in israel where where the lord jesus christ was born and uh, i think it's called the church of nativity i hope i'm not wrong but whatever in the before you can enter the church the church had this very small doorway entryway it was only three feet high that's the only way you can enter into this church three feet high so when you approach that door before you go into this church into the presence of god so to say you had to stoop down low and hum uh, uh, almost humiliate yourself Go in humility, get down low 
before you enter in to go worship the Lord. That is the position uh, that the scripture tells us to approach God when we go into a time of fasting. So this morning, we go to God and we're like, Lord, I, I don't feel confident about today. I'm already hungry. Lord, if you don't help me today, I will not make it through this fast, but I want to, I want to commune with you and I want to please you and I want to fast. So Lord, I am humbling myself before your great glory, before your majesty. I am humbling myself before you uh, so I can make it through this fast, so I can hear from you, so I can feel your presence, so you can expose me to me. Amen. <laughs> that is how we are to uh, go before the Lord in this period of time with no food, we are to approach God with humility. And not only humility, but a sorrow for sin. Sorrow for sin. What is sin? Sin is, sin is missing the mark of God. And during this time, we're not going to be focusing on other people's sin but we are focusing on our sin. When you look in the Gospels, I can't remember, I'm just thinking of it off the top of my head. When Jesus went to preach and he was preaching to the people on the seaside and there were so many people, they couldn't hear him. And so he, he saw a fisherman there and he was like, can I use your boat to use as a pulpit? And the fisherman was Peter. And Peter said, yeah, Jesus, go ahead and use my boat. So, so Jesus got into Peter's boat, pushed it out a little bit into the water so that his voice would be amplified and more people could hear him. So here is Jesus, the Lord of glory. Amen. That is who Jesus is. Jesus standing in Peter's boat preaching to the people. And then once Jesus was done preaching, Peter responded. He said, Lord, please go away from me because I am a sinful man. Being close to Jesus in the boat exposed Peter to his own sin. Peter didn't say, oh, Jesus, I'm around so many sinful people. But no, Peter was like, Lord, please go away from me for I am a sinful man. When we, whenever we come close to Jesus, the light and righteousness and holiness of Jesus Christ will expose us to ourselves. And that is another thing that will happen during fasting. We are, our eyes are open to how sinful we are, how imperfect we are, how unholy we are. And, and what is the purpose of that, uh, Rochelle? You may be saying, what's the purpose of that? The purpose of that is to show us our need of a savior. Show us our need of a savior. That's the whole point of us fasting, saying, Lord, I am not all that. I need you so much. Lord God, I can't even fast a half a day without failing. Lord, I need you. So <clears throat> a fast was a period of time when no food was eaten and people approached God with humility and sorrow for their own sin. So when you see your failure compared against the light of Christ's perfection. Don't get discouraged. Don't say, oh, I can't do this Christian thing. It's too hard for me. No, that is exactly where God wants us to be. He wants us to be in a position where uh, we see our need of him. And so just keep pressing on. 
If you if you fail part way during the fast, see if you can make it the other half of the day uh, through the fast. Or if you can make it another hour, or if you can make it another minute, but don't give up because that is the whole purpose. Amen. And lastly, um, it is a time for us to go into urgent prayer, urgent prayer, urgent prayer. The church, uh, we as the church, we have been called to a time of urgent prayer, urgent prayer. Uh, there is no time to waste. We don't know when our last day will be on this earth, whether if Jesus comes back or if the Lord calls us home today, we need to be in a time of urgent prayer, urgent prayer, uh, not so much for ourselves or for our families or for me and mine, but urgent prayer for those who don't know the Lord and who are lost in their sin. We need to be urgently seeking God to save their souls, to use us as a, a, a witness, as a light in this dark world. So those are the three areas, our position, our position as we enter every Monday morning uh, during this seven weeks of fast. First one is approaching God with humility. Also, the second one is approaching God with a sorrow for our sin. And thirdly, approaching God with an urgency in prayer. And I pray that you will have a blessed fast. And I pray that we will start hearing testimonies of how God has blessed you and drawn you closer to him during this time. Lord, we thank you for this time um, to come together uh, to hear a word of encouragement for our fasting. Lord, please, please, Lord God, help us uh, to not uh, draw away from you. But Lord, during these tough times, during fasting, help us to draw closer to you so that we may have a closer relationship and walk with you. And it will overflow with the closeness to our brothers and sisters in Christ. We love you, Lord. And we invite you, Lord, into our hearts even more. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless and have a blessed day.